what is going on everybody this is your host rob welcome back to another episode of from my experience podcast we have biff hello and we have a special guest miss jennifer mcpherson hello woot woot now this is a very special episode this is a very important episode and this is a very special guest because of what she does so jennifer i'm gonna let you tell the people what it is that you do Okay, so my name is Jennifer McPherson. I am a licensed professional counselor working in the Philadelphia area. So one of the main things that I do, I work for a population health management company, and I go out in the Philadelphia area and I provide therapy for people in the home. And the reason why I do it in the home is that we have a lot of people that may be sick due to mental illness or medical conditions. So those people that aren't able to get out and actually see a therapist or don't have access to therapy, I'm able to bring it to the home. And then what I also do, I work as a clinical supervisor and a consultant, and I focus on working in my own community, which is North Philadelphia, and I really want to bring awareness <laughs> to mental health and also help to train other clinicians of color of how to be competent therapists in their field. Additionally, I work with physicians and nurse practitioners on how they can better help patients with behavioral health issues, because really that relationship that people have in the medical office can really integrate mental health issues and get them the treatment that they need. Look at all that black girl magic. Yeah, for real. <laughs> um, first of all, let me say, say... What do you do? Just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, even though we don't know each other personally, I want to say I'm proud of you and I appreciate you for doing such a noble thing. Yeah, I know that can that can be a lot. I wasn't a counselor. I was an elementary school teacher, so I was a semi-counselor sometimes. So I know what it's like to mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. carry the burden of someone else's troubles or what they're dealing with. And it's, it's hard to sleep at night sometimes thinking about some of those things. But okay. what what made you decide to choose on this career path? Did you know in college, like right away or...? No, um, I actually wanted to start off and be pre-med in college. I did one semester and I didn't think it was for me because being, you know, this girl from North Philadelphia, both of my parents are immigrants. I didn't have money to go to college. I relied heavily on student loans and working multiple jobs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. once I started off being pre-med, it didn't <laughs> seem attainable to me. So I went through this phase where I was just you know, changing my major like every semester for like a year and a half. I had like every major under the sun. Um, I finally landed on psychology and it kind of stuck with me and mm -hmm. carried on with it. Um, I also minored in religion and I finally made the decision like, you know what, I want to help people with whatever they may be going through, whether it's trauma, their demons, addiction. And I made it my mission to go to grad school and really focus on helping people be the best version of themselves and it's something that just really just stuck with me and i've been in love with it ever since you know what i like doing that for people on a on a casual level as friends like me and biff call each other when we have stuff on our mind and we talk but again i, I don't think i could do it professionally so what um how can a person tell other than you know going to see someone a professional and being diagnosed what are some of the signs that, you know, the average person probably needs to look out for to say, you know what, maybe there's more going on with me than just regular stress? <clears throat> so what that can look like, anyone, in my opinion, can really go to therapy, whether you're going through something current or whether it's something in your past or you're really just working to better on yourself. I mostly mm -hmm. see people that have been going through something for a long period of time and they're just tired. I see mm -hmm. most of my people when they're kind of at their wits end, like they've probably tried everything. They've tried the wrong things. They've tried some of the right things. They've you know, taken advice from other people. They've probably done the self-help books. And I've had some people that, you know, that haven't done anything at all. So it's really when you just get to that point where, you know what, I kind of want to stop this cycle of insanity and just try to make myself better, try to make my days better, try to make my life and my future better. I think that's when you can benefit from therapy the most, when you're ready to commit and make those changes. Because while therapists, you know, we help elicit the work and help people move towards those type of changes and build that insight and, you know, work through their trauma or all their stuff that they might be carrying, mm -hmm. 
the patients are really the ones that are doing all of the work. The patients are the ones that have to sort through all of their stuff and make themselves move forward. We're here just to really kind of help you and guide you throughout that process. Okay. Cool, cool. How do you like Philly? I actually uh, grew up in Philly. Uh, we might know each other. What part of Philly are you from? <laughs> It's like I don't know you. Um, I grew up in <laughs> now. I grew up in Northeast Philly. I used to live like five minutes from Franklin Mills Mall. Okay, I grew up in North Philly, right around Broughton, Susquehanna, near Temple University. Oh yeah, I know where you at. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was there from '97 to 2003. Okay, okay. Yeah, I miss the food, and I miss. Um, is it still tax free on clothes? No, no. Oh, oh no, I ain't coming back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what made you so you where'd you go to school again uh for undergrad i went to temple university okay for graduate school i went to uh pcom over on city avenue okay and then i'm also in school right now i'm getting my executive mba over at st joe's okay you, you just all kind of education going on what, <laughs> is there anything in particular that's keeping you in the pennsylvania area you ever thought about leaving I have thought about leaving. Um, I love this area. My family lives in this area. You know, they kind of just got off the plane back in the 70s and never moved anywhere. So got you. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. my roots are just kind of here. But just through working in this field, I found that Philadelphia is actually kind of behind the curve compared to other states when it comes to mental health. Really? Like we're big, yeah. We're a big city, and if you ever walk around Philly, for those that have been to the city, you see a lot. Yeah. You see a lot of homelessness. <laughs> you see a lot of drug abuse. You just see some wild, crazy stuff on the street. And just working in this field, there are a lot of people that need our services in the city of Philadelphia. But the city of Philadelphia is not great on, one, connecting people to those services, really feeling those needs, and really advocating for the substance abuse and mental health population. So I've kind of grown attached to Philadelphia because working in this area, when I say Philadelphia, I know I do the outside counties as well too. Okay. This area really needs a lot of help. And when I'm working with these patients within this population, you know, you always hear, well, you know what? I tried to get the therapy, but my insurance, I tried to get the mm -hmm. therapy, but there was a wait list. I tried to get the therapy, mm -hmm. but you know what? I worked with a therapist for three months and um, they ended up, you know, moving over to another agency and I have somewhere else to go. So part of my work just advocating for mental health as a whole. The city of Philadelphia is one of those places where mental health needs to be better because our population is hurting severely all over the Philadelphia area. Mm. Biff, you going to chime in or you can keep messing with your nails? <laughs> you know, I'm like really, it's bothering me. But um, no. yeah, I was getting ready to say, um, I know the seasons are coming up. I did bring it up last episode about um, seasonal depression. Um, could you actually explain that and what it looks like, and um, if you're feeling the symptoms, what you what you could do? So for seasonal depression, that usually is you know a transition in mood as the time changes. You know, with daylight savings time, it gets darker earlier. You know, in the morning, it's still dark. We have a lot of darkness. And then with the weather changing, people's moods tend to shift and they tend to feel more depressed because they're not really getting the sunlight and not really being as active as they need to be. Um, it usually looks like normal symptoms of depression, like, you know, loss of interest in things they once found pleasurable, people feeling down, depressed, blue. You may see changes in someone's sleep or energy levels, changes in their appetite, changes in concentration level, um, people just feeling bad about themselves in general. And sometimes, you know, some thoughts or feelings of maybe not wanting to be here and maybe some suicidal thoughts as well, too. But it usually comes on, you know, around that seasonal change, kind of like that spark change. So what I really recommend for people, you know, it's okay to talk to your family doctor about these symptoms. And if you feel like you need additional help and you agree, you know, some people choose to go on antidepressants. Some people mm -hmm. choose to, um, you know, talk to a therapist or a social worker to have support during those seasons. I really recommend during those seasons that people try to get active, try to do something that's going to force you to get up and not be in the house so much to kind of be within that darkness, whether mm -hmm. it be 
exercise, going out with friends, maybe just trying to explore and do things as a hobby. Um, in some cases, we actually you know refer people to psychiatrists who might be prescribed a special light where they kind of get the fulfillment of the light that they might be missing because of daylight savings time. And we do hmm. see some people respond very well because their brain is kind of taking in that extra light and tricking them that, you know, they have more light in the day. And we see um, it helps with some people with their depression as well, too. Oh, the more you know. Yes. You need vitamin D. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so if do you have any... Um national hotlines or resources if anybody's feeling bad but doesn't necessarily want to let a family member or a friend know is there any you have any resources or any hotlines we can reach out to or you know that we can constantly remind people on the show where they can you know get in contact with anybody if they're feeling depressed or suicidal or if they just need somebody to talk to so if someone is feeling suicidal <laughs> no the first step if they're not really willing to reach out to their family I would say contact the suicide, the uh, crisis suicide hotline. That is a national number. They were 24 seven, 365. Um, they are really great. These people are trained to help people in a crisis situation and bring them down. The thing is, you know, when people are familiar with these type of situations, whatever state you may be in, there might be a different name for it. But in Philadelphia, we call it a 302, an involuntary commitment. And people get very scared when they say, hey, I might be, suicidal they kind of think that they're going to be dragged away by the cops or thrown somewhere and treated like they're crazy yeah when in reality that's being done so that you're not a harm for yourself mm -hmm. but no at the same token i do think depending on where you are it's different everywhere there probably needs to be more training and more sensitivity about how we treat people that might be having suicidal ideations or might be wanting to hurt themselves in some capacity Mm -hmm. So I really do recommend, you know, talking to your family doctor if you feel comfortable enough. There are other, they are a resource that can help you in the moment. Um, some people are even resorting to technology these days. They do have online therapy platforms where mm -hmm. you can talk to a therapist, you know, by texting, video phone, um, video chat on your computer or things like that and increase your access that way as well too. Because if you don't tell anyone how are we going to be able to help you? You have to speak right. out about it so that yes. we can help at least yeah. try to make this process better for everyone involved as best as we can as well, too. And I know it's different state by state. Yes. Please, 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 please do not feel ashamed. Do not feel sad. Do not feel any negative, any negative feelings. If you feel like you need to seek help, if you feel like you need to seek help, you're actually doing the most mature thing that you can do. We want the healthy you. We want a good you. So even if you are feeling any type of way, please let somebody know. Look at y'all um, advocating for the community. I'm so proud of y'all. I know. <laughs> Shut up. You know I'm big on this, Biff. I know. Um, That's yeah, why I made is... sure you were here. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a really a real special issue to my heart just because I, I specifically deal with it. Um, again, especially in the black community, it, it is very stigmatized about getting mental health help we need it just oh, yeah. for so many just for so long so many generations of not having it there has been trauma built up mm -hmm. uh, we have even if you don't have issues now you probably had issues in the past that you need to deal with in a way that a lot of us communicate deal with and physically react is a just it shows it shows we got issues and we need to deal with them and it's okay to deal with them and um it's okay to talk to somebody. It doesn't make you crazy. It doesn't make you, nobody's going to look at you any different. We want a healthy and better you. So when you have more of you, there's healthy and better yous under you. And not only that, even in your community, you want everybody in your community a healthy and a better version of themselves too. So do not hesitate. Nobody will judge you. Um, it's an open floor. Again, like I've always said, um, if you're on our Facebook page, Instagram or anything, if you ever felt like you needed to talk to me about anything, feel free to write a message. I will respond if I can in a timely manner. Um, I have an open door policy, so if you need to get in contact with me, just get to Rob and he can get to me. Or you can, like I said, you can message me personally and I'll be here and I'll help you the best that I can. Um, also, if you have any more questions on this, you can leave a question or a comment on our Facebook page, Instagram, or anything else. And then if we need to get in touch with um, this special, wonderful young man, the young lady right here, we will. And um, we can get the answers to you as best as we can. And if 
either one of us don't know, I'm pretty sure we can teamwork enough to get you to where somebody does know an answer. Mm -hmm. Very true. Now, you, you also have a clinic where you help other people seeking licensure. What, what are, all right, so let's say I'm seeking licensure. What are some of the things outside of, I guess, the academic requirements and professional requirements and certifications? What are some things as a person, what are some of the characteristics I probably need to have or some of the things I need to be thinking about if I'm going to enter into this field? I always recommend to anyone that works under me for their license, you either need to get into therapy yourself Mm. If you have not been in therapy already, mm. I first learned this as a graduate student. I remember my first day of school, they told us, if you have not been to therapy already before you leave this program, we want you to go to therapy. And I'm thinking, well, mm. why the hell I got to go to therapy? I'm trying to be a <laughs> <laughs> And throughout my graduate program, I saw why, because we're helping people with a whole range of things, a lot of heavy stuff. And sometimes when we work with people, we're human. We can be triggered, too. We can, you know, bring some stuff in our life because most therapists, when they get into this field, they probably have some experience behind them that's really kind of giving them that drive and that motivation to help others that are similar to them. So I always recommend they go to therapy and help better themselves because if they have any stuff that's there that can impact that therapist-client relationship, that's more harm to the patient. Mm. And you're stopping the patient from probably doing the most growth that they can probably achieve. So I always recommend, you know, working through your own stuff so that you can be the best therapist that you can be. I always, you know, encourage people to focus on ethics because we do have an ethical code as therapists that we need to uphold in order to protect ourselves, protect the community and protect our patients as well. And also doing a lot of education that you don't get in school. Because when you go to school, you learn about theory, you learn technique, you might learn about health, you learn about ethics, you learn about laws, and then you do an internship or a practicum, you write a lot of papers. But once you actually get in this field, that's when the real learning and growth starts. Because starting off as a young, ripe therapist, you know, you're eager, you're willing to work, you kind of think you know everything, and then you kind of get hit with these patients, and you're like, okay, I don't know everything. Yeah. Really expanding your horizons, being open to what may come to you, and also knowing what your limitations are. Knowing, okay, this is what I don't know. How can mm -hmm. I go learn it? Also focusing on people helping expand their education, learn you know, all of those extra things that they probably thought that they didn't know. And the biggest thing is really focusing on your self-care as a therapist. You know, we might hear that once or twice in graduate school, but once you're actually in this field and you experience burnout for the first time, mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to have that happen again. So recognizing the signs of burnout and knowing what you need in order to take care of yourself so that you can continue working in this field. Yeah, burnout is very real. Really? I experienced it as a teacher. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I don't know how I survived it. I did it my senior year. That was the worst. <laughs> Oh, oh I like remember two, those days. Bill. Yeah, I remember that. Oh God, <laughs> I burned out so bad. Like my body was like craving certain foods because I was lacking in nutrients. Like I was running on fucking five-hour energies and coffee. Oh mm -hmm. my God. Yeah. And burn burnout is not just you know being physically tired. It affects your emotional health, your mental health, your spiritual mm -hmm. health. You feel it almost like in every bone and muscle in your body and. It can be something that's hard to bounce back from, too. Yeah, it took me a while. I didn't even, yeah. Even after I graduated that December, I don't think I got it back together until, like, maybe that March or something like that. Because mm. I was burnt out, burnt out. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Um, Biff, you got any more questions for Jennifer? Um, no, I think we pretty much covered everything. Just, um, just regular conversation. Pretty much everything I needed to say has been said. Um... I don't know if Jennifer would like to give out um, any of her professional links or any of her professional um, social media pages if anybody wants to reach out her alone specifically. So oh, most, she... oh sorry, oh, go ahead. No, you go okay. ahead. Most people reach out to me on Instagram. Oddly enough, um, I can be found at Jen McPherson LPC, and um, I'm also on Facebook under Jennifer A McPherson. 
All right. Well, we want to thank you again for joining us. Um, again, we appreciate what you do and what you're doing for the community and bringing awareness to mental health. And thank you for the tips and things of that nature. Hopefully someone listening who is going through or who knows someone is going through would take some of this information and use it to help somebody else. Um, and again, thank you for all that you do. Um, and you're welcome back anytime. You just let us know. Thank you for having me, of course. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll All see right. y'all next time. Peace. All right, guys. Stay down. Stay black. Stay proud. Stay you. And we'll get to you next week. <laughs>